The next type of decision we need to look at is the cell or process further decision. So we already covered joint and byproduct. If we look at this example, just as a little bit of revision, we've got product X originates from a joint process where 1,000 units of X and 500 units of Y are produced. The joint manufacturing cost amounts to 450,000 Rand. Joint costs are allocated to products using the physical quantities method. So 300,000 Rand is allocated to X and 150,000 Rand is allocated to Y. Let's draw this process. So we've got our joint production process which results in two different products, product X and product Y. And we've got joint manufacturing costs here of 450,000 Rand. We also know that we are dealing with 1,000 units of X and 500 units of Y. And they tell us that this joint cost is allocated to the different products using the physical quantities method. So meaning it's allocated based on the number of production units. So if we look at product X, this is how we allocate the joint cost. It's going to be multiplied by 1,000 over the total number of units. So in total, X and Y, we have 1,500 units, which gives me 300,000 Rand of this joint cost being allocated to product X. And we can do a similar calculation for product Y. We're going to multiply by 500 units over the total 1,500 units. So 150,000 Rand is being allocated to product Y. So you obviously didn't have to do the calculation in this question because they did give you the information already. We know that the total joint cost is 450,000 Rand. We know that 300,000 is allocated to X and 150,000 is allocated to Y. So you didn't need to do that. That's just a little bit of revision from my side. Then X can be sold without any further processing at a selling price of 400 Rand per unit. So product X can be sold at the split off point over here for 400 Rand per unit. Or it can be processed further where we incur an additional processing cost of 150,000 Rand. So if we process it further, my costs increase by 150,000 Rand. But then my selling price increases to 650 Rand per unit if I sell after further processing. The demand for X is of such a nature that all units manufactured can be sold, whether they are processed further or not, and the selling and admin costs do not change as a result of further processing. So remember, guys, if the costs don't change, they are not relevant. Regardless of what we do, if we sell at the split off point or if we process further, the cost doesn't change. So if there's no change or there's no difference between the alternatives, in other words, it's not avoidable, it is therefore not relevant. So we weren't actually given the selling and admin cost in this question, but they're not relevant, so we don't need to know what the actual cost is. We need to determine with the required whether X should be processed further. So we need to determine whether they should sell product X at the split off point or if they should process it further. And remember guys, once again, we can either do the calculation using the total approach or the incremental approach. First, we are just going to quickly look at the total approach. And remember with the total approach, I perform two separate calculations. I'm going to calculate what will happen if I do not process further. So if I sell the product at the split off point, versus what will happen if I sell the product after further processing. Two separate calculations. So if product X is sold at the split off point, my selling price is 400 Rand per unit for 1,000 units. So my sales will be 400,000 Rand. And what's very important to note, if I sell the product at the split off point, the only cost that I would have incurred is my joint cost over here, and the portion that's allocated to X is 300,000 Rand. If I sell at the split off point, I obviously will not incur those further processing costs. So my joint cost over there is 300,000 Rand, and I will not have any further processing costs, which means if I sell at the split off point, I have a profit of 100,000 Rand. What happens if we sell the product after further processing? 
Then my selling price increases to 650 rand a unit for 1,000 units. So my sales are 650,000 rand. And now, because the product is being processed further, I've got the joint manufacturing cost and I also have the further processing cost. So I've got both of those costs that need to be taken into account. And we can see if the product is processed further, it results in a profit of 200,000 rand. So if you've used the total approach to do the calculation, you are now done, you can conclude. If we sell at the split off point, we make 100,000 rand. If we process further, we make 200,000 rand. So we can see we get an additional profit of 100,000 rand if we process further. So therefore, we should process further. Product X should be processed further as it results in an additional profit of 100,000 rand. So that's using my total approach. If we now look at the incremental approach, Remember, with the incremental approach, we only perform one calculation, and with the one calculation, we only take relevant cash flows into account. So it must comply with the definition of a relevant cost or a relevant benefit. If it doesn't, we don't include it in our calculation. So remember, what is our definition? It must be a future cash flow that differs between alternatives. In other words, it must be avoidable. And then it is relevant. So with the incremental approach, assuming that we do process further, if I process further, I earn additional revenue of 250,000 Rand. And those are the future cash flows that differ between the alternatives. Because if I sell at the split off point, I make 400,000 Rand. If I process further, I make 650,000. So the difference between the two is I make an extra 250,000 Rand if I process further. That is the avoidable portion because if I don't want to make that extra revenue, I can just sell at the split off point. It's different between the alternatives, it's avoidable, so that is the relevant portion. And how do we calculate it if we don't have this information over here? Because remember, the incremental approach is a standalone calculation. If you choose to follow the incremental approach, you're not going to have the total approach to pull your calculation from. You're going to have to do this as a standalone calculation, meaning that I'm only looking at the cash flows that differ between the alternatives. So what is the incremental revenues? And the incremental costs. So the incremental revenues or the additional revenue that I earn is the difference between 650 Rand per unit and 400 Rand per unit multiplied by 1,000 units. That's the extra money that I will make if I process further. Remember, my joint cost is not relevant because regardless of what I do, I still incur the joint cost of 300,000 Rand if I sell at the split off point or if I process further. So it's the same for both alternatives. It doesn't differ between alternatives, and therefore it's not relevant. It's excluded. Further processing cost, that is an incremental cost. It differs between alternatives because if I sell at the split off point, I don't incur the cost. But if I process further, I do incur the cost. So that cost is relevant. So once again, we can see the benefit of processing further is 100,000 rand. So whichever way you perform the calculation, you can see we should process further because by processing further, we earn an extra 100,000 rand.